Hello everybody and welcome to Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. I'm Jack and today I'm here to discuss uh, my tournament report of the London Internationals that have just been passed. Uh, this past weekend I got 68th place out of a field of 781 Masters, which was the biggest tournament Europe has seen ever, which was really, really cool. Um, and getting 68th was uh, really, I was really, really happy with that. I aimed to get points, I wanted to get top 128. Uh, just because it's 100 points, so that's a really, really good sort of boost to um, getting getting into Worlds, especially as Worlds is only 250 for Europe this year. So yeah, I was super happy with my performance. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about the deck, I'm going to talk about sort of leading up to the day, what I was thinking. Um, a couple of sort of tech options with the list itself, then I'm going to go through my matchups. I uh, played against some pretty good players on the day, so uh, it was fun meeting a lot of new people. And then I'm kind of going to have a little bit of a rundown of what what sort of went on, I think, in my mind of the format, um, where the format's going, and what I personally am going to be playing for the uh, next couple of tournaments going into, or sort of the League Cups going into uh, the rest of this season. So yeah, just as a bit of a side note, this is obviously on YouTube. Uh, you can catch this full stream. It'll only be sort of maybe 45 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes longer than the actual video itself. Uh, but I will upload the full stream. If you guys don't know, me and Joe stream once a week, every week, over on Twitch.tv. That's why you can see all of this stuff, sort of, on the side. Um, all of the follower things and the chat box and stuff. I'm actually streaming live right now as I record this, so there may be a few, sort of, chat questions. Um, and yeah, just make sure uh, to come and check us out if you haven't already. A lot of you guys probably do know about the streams already, but that's why there's all this, sort of, other stuff around the side um and yeah if you want to see the full stream i'm going to play a couple of games after i've played a game before and i'm going to play a game or two afterwards as well uh, off camera or off the recording so yeah uh, make sure you head over to uh, twitch.tv slash team omnipoke to catch me and joe streaming at least once a week every week um but yeah other than that i decided to play gardevoir for the tournament uh in a lot of people's minds it's the best deck in format there was a lot of Hype around Gardevoir, it did feel like Gardevoir was the deck to beat, uh, that and Garb variants. So it it was a bit of a risk, I never liked playing the best deck in format, I've only just started sort of considering it, I've always been more of a tier 2 tier two player that tries to counter the best deck in format, um, but I've started to play just purely what is the best deck in format right now, uh, a little bit more going to cups and things. Like I say though, there's a huge target on Guardi's head in my mind, and I really wasn't sure uh, whether I wanted to play it, because I didn't want to have round after round of sort of people teching to beat me um, and just losing to one or two cards in random lists. Uh, so I was also considering things like Grandpa and Golligarb. Um, Grandpa, a friend of mine, James, was James decided to play and he's been playing the deck for maybe three, four months. So I'd seen how consistent it could be. Um, it is without a doubt, I think, the most consistent Garb variant. Espeon's kind of died down and they've kind of merged into one list now. So it, like Espeon, Grandpa, Garb was kind of one thing. Um, so it's definitely the most sort of consistent, in my mind, the most consistent garb variant. So I was considering that um, just because it does what it wants to do, and that's kind of what you what you need in a tournament with nine rounds um, going into a day two. And then Golly Garb was another one, just because it felt like a, a sheer powerhouse at times. There were games where you just didn't let the opponent do anything. You could ace a roll of loop. You could Guzma store uh, Guzma knock out things from turn two. Uh, it just felt really, really oppressive. And whenever I played, when I played Gardevoir for the Bremen Regionals um, late, in late September or mid September, my one sort of matchup I'd never really enjoyed playing against was Golligarb. Um, more than anything, because I hadn't tested too much against it, but I always felt like Glispod was a difficult Pokemon to deal with. Um, I start, I've started to work out the matchup a bit more, but I felt like maybe people who hadn't worked out the matchup, and there were a couple of tech cards I was also playing in Golligarb that helped the Gardevoir matchup. That meant I actually th thought uh, that Golligarb was had a favourable Gardevoir, which is sort of was a number one priority for me at least. Having a favourable Gar Garbodor, uh, Gardevoir, sorry, and then a semi decent Garbodor matchup as well. Uh, a lot of Garbodor matchups are pretty similar. They're, there's only two real Garbodor variants. Um, so yeah, those are the de three decks I was considering: this Golligarb and Drampagarb. Towards the start of the week, I kind of wrote off Drampagarb because it just wasn't playing as consistently as I liked it to be. Um, it felt like it was drawing like Golligarb, and I felt like if both decks are drawing at a similar 
um, sort of rate. I'd rather play a deck that I feel has a stronger output, which was Goligar, that can do 120 turn two. I feel a lot more consistently than Dramp can do 180 turn two because you need a lot less pieces. You just need to evolve pretty much. Um, I was also playing, I was flipping between a Feromosa, a third choice band, and a Celesteela GX in Goligarb. The Celesteela obviously inspired by Mark Lutz himself, but also um, the fourth choice band and the Feromosa was something that me and Joe had talked about in our top 10 decks for London. And I was really, really um, passionate about the idea of using it in, uh, in theory craft, but when it came to actually playing it on the day, or playing, um, playing with it in testing, it was so difficult to actually get this whole combo off. You needed the fact you needed a second energy a lot of the time was really really brutal. Um, so yeah, Feromosa quickly came out for the fourth choice band. Then Mark started talking about Celesteela. I saw it on a couple of his streams, so I wanted to try that. Didn't get too much time to try that. I only had one or two games with it, uh, which is then when when I kind of reverted back to Guardi. I've been playing Guardi. I have been playing Guardi ever since Bremen. I played it leading up to Bremen and have played it ever since. Uh, as you can see in the list, there are no new cards from Burning from Crimson Invasion at all, so uh, the list didn't really change too much. Um, so yeah, I was kind of playing with this list all the way through. Max Potions were quite a late addition. Um, they happened sort of the Tuesday, Wednesday night. Uh, that, that week I streamed for, I think, four hours pretty much solely playing Guardi, just trying to work out the mirror, trying to work out what slots I did and didn't want. Uh, as you can see... Talking about the list itself, there's no Mime in the list, which was uh, a bit of a bold call on the day. I wasn't sure whether I was going to be punished for it, uh, but it turns out I didn't face a single Buzzwall deck all day. Uh, and I think only one of the I, only one of the two or three decks that ran Tapu Koko actually used Flying Flip against me anyway. So I, it was a completely fine decision on the day. It was one I was a little bit nervous about um, leading into the tournament, but actually uh, it, paid, it paid off dividends and it meant that I had an extra card for the Mirror. Uh, that was essentially one of the biggest reasons why I dropped it, because it was just a completely dead card in the mirror. And like I said, I wanted to have a deck that I felt could uh, not auto-win the mirror, but just had a very, very favourable matchup against the mirror. Um, there was also this hype around broken broken deck, broken Guardi, with four Max Potion. I know I kind of didn't win that one, because they ran two more Max Potion than me. Uh, but I was hoping a lot of people... Wouldn't, have, wouldn't be playing that and that would be playing sort of garb variants. It turned out garb actually was really... I don't know what to, I don't know whether to say underrepresented is the correct word because it felt like there was quite a bit of garb looking around the tables. But I only faced, I think, one... Looking at my matchups here, yeah, I only faced one garb deck all day. Um, so yeah, garb wasn't really represented. Um, I think there were a few uh, broken, broken decks, obviously... Chris Jumanski made top four with his broken li uh, his broken list. So, and then Pram played it as well, who also got top thirty two, maybe even top sixteen. I can't remember exactly where he placed. Uh, but yeah, there are there are obviously people repping this deck. So I know I didn't really win those matchups, but against standard Guardi builds with things like Sylveon and Octillery, um, I felt confident in because I had the double parallel. I had a one one Sylveon as a bit of a backup. Um, and I'd done, and I had two max potion, and I'd done a lot of testing with um, some very good players in the UK playing Guardi. Um, so I felt I knew the mirror quite well. It, it it is ultimately down to who draws better, but I felt I knew how to navigate the mirror, which was really important on the day. Um, so yeah, no Mister Mine was one addition, one um, not addition, one one notable drop, and the other one was dropping Octillery for a, a single Orangaroo. Again, to gain an extra slot for the mirror. Um, my two initial slots um, were... I was only playing one Parallel City and I was only playing one Floatstone. I po uh, pushed both of those up to a two count when uh, I dropped those two, the two Mime and the slot from Octillery. Uh, and yeah, both really, really helped throughout the day. I think on reflection, I wouldn't change much about the list at all. Um... I'd maybe consider cutting the float stones simply for like a second super rod and then I don't know maybe a third max potion but at that point you're kind of getting into broken style deck range and then the list kind of changes a little bit itself anyway uh, maybe even second Gallade as well because Gallade was definitely the MVP on the day um, but yeah so yeah it was re it was a really really I really really liked the list it was really really for, for a guardy deck it was really consistent there was only I think 
think there was two games out of my whole day where it felt like a really clunky stage two deck where I just didn't draw anything. Um, and one of them uh, sort of, it didn't really matter because the, in the, I think the game afterwards, uh, yeah, 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 the, the game afterwards they also drew dead. So it was kind of um, not really, it didn't really feel like a stage two deck all day. It ran really, really well. Uh, so I was super happy with the list on the day. Um, but yeah, going into the tournament, like I say, 781 Masters, which was huge. It meant that we didn't get 256 points, which was sad. Um, so it really meant I had to hit that 128 marker because uh, that just that's just filled me with confidence that I can get my invite this year. If I hadn't got my if I hadn't got that 128, um, I would have been, I would have been really disappointed in my it, not only in myself, but I would have felt like um, I couldn't. I maybe I, I maybe would have struggled to get to Worlds just because of how. Uh, how the tournament system is and how many or little cups I can get to over the next few months. Um, and whilst I hadn't done too much testing for this tournament, I felt I'd done enough testing and enough theory craft to know what to expect and have a decent time, theoretically have, should be able to have a decent time on the day. So, um, yeah, I would have been really disappointed if I didn't get 128, but I did indeed get 128. Um, so yeah, going on to my matchups, Day one, um, or not day one, but round one was against a Mewtwo Lunala deck. Um, and this was one of the games where I bricked my first game all day. I started pretty much, I think it was with two routes and nothing else. Um, so yeah, that this game one was over pretty quickly. Unfortunately, uh, I thought maybe this is going to be a testament to how the day goes, which would have been really unfortunate. Uh, this was the Mewtwo GX, by the way. So... Game two and three, um, my opponent decided to use Psy Strike GX to knock out Sylveon, which does a straight 200 damage. Um, but because they attached three energy for that attack, it left them really, really vulnerable. So as long as I was able to get at least one Magical Ribbon off um, and get at least one Guardi out before they took out my Sylveon, I was often able to just respond KO with that. Uh, and they were running Elixirs, but at that point, kind of the deck's big blow up attack is Psy Strike GX. The rest is just a weaker version of Guardi, it's just 30 times the energy on you, or 60 for 2. Um, so at that point I was able to just out outpower them really. Uh, so as long as I navigated the GX attack sort of appropriately, I was fine. Uh, and both games my opponent decided to take the GX, use the GX on the Sylveon for an early knockout, uh, which meant I was able to set up two Guardies that were just able to sort of take out anything. Um, so yeah, that was my round 1. Round 2 was against Sylvali Metals, um, and this is where I thought Oh, here, here come the here come the counter decks. All of the Sylvali metals that beat um, Guardies round one will be now at the same level as me. So there'll be um, sort of a, a few about, and there were indeed a few about. There was one sat next to me. Uh, there was one a, a couple of tables down tables down from me. There was one uh, opposite me as well. Um, but honestly, in in the matchup, Gallade is just so so insane. Sensitive Blade knocking out. Uh, Sylvali GX is really really big Game one I was able to take two prizes on a Gallade um, Two prizes on I believe it was a Magirna uh, Just through building up a Guardian one shotting it and I think my last two prizes were just on two non EXs um, So that was game one game two I, I had to I sort of realized mid midway through the uh, Series that Gallade was a really good attacker, but actually Lele is a really good attacker as well uh, Celesteela has to have at least three energy on it to um, start doing any anything significant, and then it needs a choice band on top. And if they miss the choice band, they have to attach an extra energy to be able to knock out a Guardian one hit. Uh, so that's up to four energy. So if you're able to poke a Celesteela in the early turns with, with whatever, with an Oranguru, with literally anything, just to soften it up, they really become a really, really good attacker in that matchup. Plus, they can't one shot you back without using their GX. Um, so yeah, it, Lele became a really, really valuable attacker in that matchup, and I was able to set up a board state where um, I was one prize, I was one prize ahead of him. So he had one prize remaining uh, to my, so he had three prizes remaining to my two, but he he was able to take out my Gardevoir. But the only way to take out my Gardevoir was him setting up a Celesteela with four energy, uh, at which point I was able to knock it out with a Tapu Lele for my last two prizes. Um, so yeah, that was the Lele and Gallade were definitely the real MVPs in that matchup. Um, Gallade is such a strong card and it actually means that the matchup that a lot of people think is kind of an auto loss actually is probably only like 
60-40 in their favour, maybe 65-35 uh, with a single Gallade. With double Gallade, I think it's no more than 60, just because Gallade, like I say, is such a good counter to Sil Valley. Uh, so yeah, that was my round two. Round three um, was another Sil Valley Metal. This was against Graft and Roll, um, and it was actually uh, it was actually streamed. I was on stream for round three, so I'll leave the link. Uh, if I can find it, I'll leave the link below. If I can't find it, uh, it's round three of day one on the um, on the on the uh, official Pokemon stream. So make sure you go and check that out. It was a really unfortunate series for Grafton because I just drew uh, pretty much everything I needed off of ends and stuff. Um, it's it's really really unfortunate that obviously his deck is kind of built to counter mine. Um, but yeah, it, I, I drew pretty much everything I needed to off of ends. I drew energy, I drew choice band when I needed it, all of this stuff. Um, and again, it meant that I was able to just take knockouts with Gallade, sort of recycle Gallade, take another knockout with Gallade. Um, and yeah, it, it was it was really, really big. I'd played the matchup a couple of times before uh, the game, before, not before the game, but before the tournament. And again, I'd found that Lele and Gallade were kind of what I had to do to win the game. So... I just focused on those pretty much. I think I only got one guard for out in maybe both of the games, uh, just because it's it, it's an easy two prizes for them, and the energy acceleration really doesn't give you much. Um, your DCEs are kind of your energy acceleration in that in that matchup. So yeah, it was a really really unfortunate series for Grafton. Uh, he played it really really well, given the fact that I just drew everything I needed to. Um, but yeah, it was it was nice being able to beat another unfavorable matchup what like round after round because it gave me a lot more confidence in the deck round four uh it was a guard of our mirror um and this went exactly how the mirror goes i unfortunately lost simply because i didn't draw I, like he drew better than me my max potions were in my bottom 10 both of my max potions were in my bottom 10 for both games and you just kind of can't win the game if you don't have your max potions my my mirror tech is the max potions and that's how i'm meant to win the mirror uh so it was really really unfortunate that I wasn't able to uh, hit those, but that's kind of the that's kind of the way the mirror goes. He he played it really really well, um, and if you don't hit your max potions, you 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 don't get to sort of do the kind of plays you need to in the mirror. Um, but yeah, there was nothing too special about the game. It was just kind of how the guardy mirror goes. He was playing artillery over on Guru, um, which meant they had a little bit more draw power than me. Uh, but I think that would have been fine had I found my max potions because I would have had one extra card potentially uh in my arsenal but that being said um either way it was it was a pretty quick 2-0 uh, just because like i say he wasn't i wasn't able to draw as well as him and he played it really really well enough to not take anything away from my opponent but um without my max potions i can't really win the mirror so yeah that was fair enough round five i was against Tord, the eventual winner of the tournament uh he was playing his zoropod of course and this was the second game where the deck um, kind of bricked on me. Game one, I think I started lone routes, uh, drew into an Eevee or something, and just had nothing. Game one was done, I think, within about three minutes, uh, which is pretty unfortunate. Um, and game two, because I wasn't 100% sure what it was playing, uh, I wasn't able to play around things like Puzzle and E-Hammer and stuff. So again, he, he definitely outplayed me. Um, I wasn't able to beat the kind of things that uh, his deck was packing the fact he had puzzles and e-hammers meant that pretty much whenever i played a dce he was able to get rid of it uh, which meant i could never ramp into getting knockouts on zoroarks uh not zoroarks galispods so i had to focus on getting Gallade and zoroark uh getting Gallade and then taking zoroark knockouts but whenever i got a Gallade, he was able to uh or the first Gallade i got he was able to gx attack knock it out with a um galispod and pr protect himself as well which was really really unfortunate uh, for me, and then the second, I think I managed to super all the Glade back in, but never saw it again, so I wasn't able to take any prizes on the Zor uh, Zoroarks. I don't think the matchup's awful. I think Glade again can put in a lot of work. Um, I've tested it a couple more times since, and I think I've won uh, the, the majority of the games. Um, but I don't think, I think it's pretty 50 50. Maybe it, like with the puzzles and the e hammers. Uh, it's favoured for Tord. I don't know, uh, or the deck in general. I don't know that because uh, I haven't done too much testing against it. But either way, it was nice finally meeting Tord. Um, and yeah, it, it was a good. Dis like the game, the game one was a complete write off, but the second game uh, was a really, really fun game. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Round six was against Gollygarb. Um This was a matchup that 
like I say, when I in Bremen, I felt very, very. Um, I didn't want to see Golly Garbs. I didn't like the matchup, but I've done a, I've done a lot of testing against Golly Garb, um, and I found the biggest, uh, the biggest weakness of Golly Garb is themselves. Uh, the deck can really, really clunk. Um, so game one, he takes five prizes before I even, even think about taking a knockout. But I'm able to he, but he's got ability lock up, so I'm able to end him down to a one card hand whilst he has ability lock up, whilst I have a guard of wire that can take a prize. And as long as I can take three prizes or three knockouts turn after turn after turn, whilst he's locked down by N and ability lock, it means that he can never get a Guzma for his last prize to win the game. So that's kind of what I have to do. I have to let him go ahead uh, and then try and punish him with N. And if he draws out of it, he draws out of it. Um, but unfortunately, he didn't. And then again in game two, he takes four prizes, at which point I end him down to a low card hand. He didn't have ability lock this time, um, but I just had to pray he wasn't able to again find these cards and take these two prizes uh, whenever i knew he had three he was going up to three cards in hand or he it looked like he was going to be able to make some kind of lele play i would end him back down to a low hand size and hope that he wasn't able to find ultra balls or leles uh, and yeah again i just had to take knockout after knockout and hope that i could take three or four knockouts depending on what i was up against before he was able to draw out of this ability uh, this ability lock slash end lock um so yeah that's kind of the strategy in the matchup uh, you let them go ahead and then you just build up two guardies and just kind of move between them max potioning and just attaching more energy and just making sure you can get knockouts so yeah uh, that was my round six my round seven was against a friend of mine sam saunders playing hobo salazzle um it was unfortunate that i me and him got paired together because we were both on a 5-2 record at the time or a 4-2 record at the time so one of us was going to be going up to 5-2 and one of us was going to be going down to 4-3 um, and 6-3 was kind of the cutoff as to where uh, we knew for a fact you'd get top 128. It turned out I think 17 match points was fine, so 5-2-2 uh, would have been fine. Uh, but we didn't want to take the risk in ID, or at least I didn't, um, just because I felt the matchup was favourable. He was playing Ho Um Game one, he had to he Kiawe to a Volk, which I was pretty which I was able to punish pretty quickly by. Um, pretty much going aggro guardy and just attaching a couple of energy and just again trying to take as many quick knockouts as I could and then game two um, he was able to hit Kiawe onto a hoa on the bench uh, but I think I was able to I think I was able to plea it or I definitely made some kind of plea play uh, that meant he had a few energy in hand I'm pretty sure um, so yeah I think that I think the matchup is favorable for me uh, but obviously it's such an aggressive deck you can naturally just kind of lose to it rolling you anyway uh, but yeah i was able to beat sam in a pretty quick series uh, which meant we were able to go and get food and just chill out for a bit so there was pros and cons but um yeah we had a we had a good time round eight was against jose morero uh, who's playing metagross and this was the quickest to uh, o2 of my life uh, he just stomped me he was playing mcginner so i couldn't uh, par uh, parallel plea his things up. He was playing a 101 Solgaleo, which he wasn't able to get up, get set up ever. Um, but I saw I there was always kind of in the back of my mind the fact that he had Solgaleo that could just soul burst a whole bunch of energy on to the board, which was a little bit scary. And then yeah, he was just playing Metagross, which uh, is pretty much it's not an auto loss, uh, but if they're playing McGinn, it is very difficult uh, because, like I say, you can't plea their board. And that's kind of all you've got to rely on. You've got to rely on taking a couple of prizes, then pleading, and then trying to build up a Guardi. So you have two Guardies on board that can take out their one Metagross. Um, so yeah, it's it, because I wasn't able to play, it was a pretty quick 0-2. Uh, and at that point, I'm at 5-3, so I'm kind of kind of feeling like I've got a win to guarantee 128. Um, I'm not, I don't think a tie can do it. I don't think any 16 match pointers made top, 32, uh, top 128. I will have a look at that, but I don't think any did. So I kind of had to win. Um, and yeah, my last round was against Gardevoira, uh, Samir Sangwan, who is a Australian player. I really hope I haven't butchered your name there, mate. Uh, but also a fan of the channel. He um, mentioned knowing the channel just before our game. And yeah, it was a really, really good series. Uh, unfortunately, it was kind of the opposite of the Gardevoir series in the, earlier in the day. Uh, I was able to draw a little bit better than him, and because I was able to draw a little bit better than him, uh, I, I was just naturally favoured. Um, there were a couple of turns where he just wasn't able to hit energy, or wasn't able to evolve, 
Um, and I was just able to punish that. I was able to take out sort of lone curliers and things like that, which meant he was just a little bit too far behind overall. Uh, so yeah, that was that was my last round. Uh, top 128 was what I was aiming for, and top 128 was indeed what I got. Uh, 68th place, I was super happy with. Uh, 100 championship points. Unfortunately, no boxes or no cash or anything, but like I say, I was going for the championship points. They were the most important thing to me, so I'm now sitting at 152. Going to a League Cup this weekend, hopefully going to be able to uh, do, get some points out of that League Cup. The deck I'm playing is almost certainly going to be this, uh, with a very minor change. Um, I'm almost certainly playing this. It, this is kind of more of a broken style build, uh, with the 4 max potions and the Octillery and then double Gallade as well, because like I say, Gallade is <laughs> Gallade was easily the MVP of the weekend. Um, being able to take up Sil Valleys and now Zoroarks, now that that's been popularised as well, is just super, super strong. Uh, so yeah, this is what I'm going to be playing this weekend. Uh, a couple of questions we've had from the chat. Was Oranguru worth it? Oranguru was... Uh, he was a bit of a champ. He, The fact that you can use him as a non-EX attacker is really, really good. Um, I really, really like that. It's It can swing the prize trade so you don't have to rely on Gallade to do so. Um, but actually it also di does a significant amount of damage. You can actually sort of set things up to be able to knock them out with Gallade, with Guardi next turn for less energy. And that's kind of the style of build this, uh, or the style of play I was going for with the build that I played at the weekend. I wanted to have access to Max Potion, which means I didn't want to overcommit to Guardies, so that meant I could overcommit to a non-EX, let them take one prize, and play the seven prize game, uh, and then just not have to overcommit to a Guardi, so that I could happily Max Potion and just need to find one energy, uh, or be able to start ramping up after a Max Potion, not without losing too many resources. Um, so yeah, that's, like, the Oranguru I think was really, really worth it. Pretty much everyone that I saw that had an Octillery, um, it was very, very, it would have been very, very useful being able to draw those extra two cards, but I think having that non-EX attacker is really, really good. In this build, though, because I've got double Gallade, uh, the Reliance is a lot heavier on, on Gallade, and naturally because of that, I don't, I think I'd stick with the Octillery just because you don't want to have Gallade and Oranguru on the board, um, sort of applying pressure with Oranguru and applying pressure with Gallade. If they want to take out another non-EX in, in Octillery or whatever, then fair enough. But I think you don't need the extra non-EX support, considering you have we have double Gallade. That's a follow from Yams. Welcome to the team, Yams. Thank you very much for the follow. But yeah, double Gallade means that I think I, I'm happy with your uh, Octillery line in here. Plus, Octillery and Gallade is a really, really good combo. Being able to draw into the two or three card exactly you want from the top five is really, really nice. As Todd said, Gallade is pretty scary. Things like Zoroark being a bit pop, becoming more popular, um, is pretty big. If Zoroark Galusipod does become pop popular, I think it is quite a difficult Pokemon for them to deal with. They can obviously uh, knock one out with a GX attack, but the fact that it's a non EX means that they can't really one shot it very well. Correct me if I'm wrong, Todd, but I think it's one of the more difficult Pokemon for you to deal with considering it's a non EX. Um, so yeah. It's it's really, really good. It was definitely like my favourite card the whole weekend. Um, and I'm definitely gonna I'm definitely gonna hopefully enjoy playing two this weekend for this tournament. It, I think I should have a pretty pretty good matchup against things like Golly Zoro and stuff like that. Um, any any metal decks that are playing Silver Valley, it should be fine. Uh Fight is just a really really good type right now. Uh but yeah, not, I don't think there's been many too many other questions in the chat. Um, but yeah, if there's any other questions down below, feel free to ask them. There's not, I feel like I've covered a lot. Uh, I don't think there's too much for me to cover. I don't, I didn't want to do a huge long video, um, sort of doing a deck analysis because, guard, like we've, we've seen, we've done Guardi, um, before. So I wanted to do something a little bit different. Do I think this version is consistent enough? Uh, from what I've been testing, it's been pretty consistent. Beacon is obviously worse than Magical Ribbon, but requires less setup. Um, but both cards you're pretty much always getting end anyway, so I I feel they're pretty they're both pretty consistent. Um, so yeah, I I think I think it's consistent enough. I don't think it's particularly inconsistent, and just having four max potion is so good. Plus Twilight, um, it's been bricking ridiculously for you. I mean, it is a stage two deck, and naturally, 
Stage two decks will brick. Um, but yeah, you just have to. Uh, like a lot, uh, I did get lucky this weekend. There wasn't too many brick games. Um, the max potions clunk up a lot. I've been trying a list with three. As you saw just before, there was a fourth. Uh, there was a third curlier in here in place of the third max in place of the fourth max potion. Sorry, I'm gonna try this max po this build with four max potions this weekend. Um, just because I think the card is inherently really really strong and. I don't want to say broken, uh, but it does seem really, really strong. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really, really liking the list in testing so far. It's only a cup, so I'm not too bothered if I completely scrub out because there's at least two or three more cups this uh, this season or this quarter that I want to go to. Uh, so it's not the end of the world if things go downhill. Plus, we've got Leipzig Regionals in, a, in I think it's about eight weeks' time. Uh, eight or nine weeks' time. But yeah... Um, so yeah, I'm not too not too worried if it doesn't go well. Uh, obviously, I'd like to do well, but Luke won the draft. What do I think about that? Um, Luke did indeed pick Tord. Andrew, welcome to the team. Thank you very much for the follow. Luke did pick Tord, which was a very very good choice. Um, so yeah, we'll have to. Uh, I know Tamal lost, so we'll have to think of some punishment for Tamal. Uh, all of this stuff uh, hopefully is on my channel by now as well. I think Joe went over them in the stream yesterday. Uh, I will double check with him before, or well, I'm pretty before uploading this anyway, uh, just in case he didn't. But yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Is the fourth Sycamore worth it? I think so. I could potentially see going down to three Sycamore, going up to a second Beacon, because um, Beacon is really strong when you prize it. Is very unfortunate. So yeah, I could see going to a second Vulpix. Uh, just for that beacon attack, but I think four Sycamore is still fine. This deck can still be really aggressive. You can still go turn two, Candy, Guardi, Knockout. No floats, only three Guzma. Uh, because we're pretty much always Twilighting in this deck, that we have no other GX attacks that we have access to, so we're always Twilighting. It means that you don't really need float stones, you can happily discard energy, I think. Plus, we have double Super Rod uh, to get back fairies specifically. And only three Guzma. Um, again, because we twilight, we can get the three Guzma back. It's not overly. It's not. It's not awful. Um, a fourth Guzma would be would be nice, but I think it's one of the lower priorities on the list. I think I'd rather even an eighth energy or a second Vulpix um, over the third uh, over the fourth Guzma. So yeah, because we're twilighting a lot, um, or we're pretty much always twilighting. I think we're not too pushed for resources overall. Uh, but I'm going to play around with this over the next couple of days anyway, just before the tournament. I think the cup, well, the cup is on Sunday, so, you know, uh, I'll I'll play around with this and hopefully uh, it won't be too brocky. But yeah, other than that, uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very, very much for watching. Make sure you check out the streams. Um, like I say, that that's where a lot of this fun stuff happens. That's what, that's all of these. And that's what all of this stuff on the screen is right now. I wanted to do a video on stream just to make you guys aware of us streaming as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you very much for watching. I've been Jack from Omnipoke, and I look forward to seeing you guys in another video.